uh, cosine and sine problems with sum and difference identities. So let's get them down first. We have the sine of a plus b is equal to the sine of a times the cosine of b plus the cosine of a times the sine of b. That's the first one. And then we have the sine of a minus b is equal to the sine of a times the cosine of b minus the cosine of a times the sine of b. Notice that the sine, sum, and difference identities have the sine and the cosine and the same signs. If it's the sine of a minus b, then it has the minus joining the two. Okay, notice those commonalities. Okay, now let's look at the cosine. We have the sum function. The cosine of a plus b is equal to the cosine of a times the cosine of b uh, minus, the. these are opposite now, the sine of a times the sine of b. And the cosine of a minus b is equal to the cosine of a times the cosine of b, and you're gonna guess it's opposite, plus the sine of a times the sine of b. So these are on your pink um, sheets that we gave you. The sum and difference formulas, they're right down towards the bottom. Um, but we can use these to solve for problems like this. So if we look at a problem like the cosine of 75, which we have no idea what that is off the top of our heads, right? So, but if we break that down into 75 is equal to 30 plus 40, it's gonna be 45, excuse me, becomes more clear. Because we can look up here and say, okay, the cosine of uh, A plus B, if I label um, 30 as A, and 45 as b, and follow this formula, I can do this without a calculator. Okay, so I have, let's write this out, okay? The cosine of 75 degrees will be equal to the cosine of a, which is 30, times the cosine of 45b, minus, okay, minus the sine of 30a, times the sine of b, which is 45. All right, remember cosine has cosine, cosine, sine, sine, and um, if it's a plus b, it's opposite. Okay, so what is the cosine of 30? Um, the cosine of 30 is radical 3 over 2. The cosine of 45 is um, radical 2 over 2. Subtracted, sine of 30 is 1 half, and sine of 45, radical two over two. Now I'm just, I'm just working it out, and I get radical six, multiply under the radical sign, over four minus radical two over four. And I just keep working it out, and I get, now I have a common denominator, and I get radical six minus radical two over four, and that is my final answer, and that is the cosine of 75 degrees. And just this one time, I'm gonna show you on the calculator that this is in fact true, okay? So we're not gonna do this all the time, but we're gonna show you this time. So we have the, let's look at it first. Now we have the, we wanna make sure we're in degrees. Okay, we are in degrees. And we have um, the cosine of 75, what does that equal? Point two five eight eight. And then we have, we're gonna do this calculation now, second radical six minus second radical two. Whoop, 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 whoop. Sorry, they're wrong. Let's just clear that. Second radical six over minus second radical two. Enter, divided by four, and we get the same answer. So that does check out, so you know that this process works. Okay, let's do one more. We have the sine of pi over 12. Well, how could I work this out using that formula? Well, 
Let's look at pi over 12. What could pi over 12 be equal to? Let's use a subtraction. I can see that as a subtraction because pi over 12 is in fact equal to pi over 3 minus pi over 4. Okay, and just so you can see that, if I make, if I get common denominators, 12, 3 times 4 is 12, pi times 4 is 4 pi, 4 times 3 is 12, this is 3 pi times 3 is 3 pi, what is 4 pi minus 3 pi? Well, that is pi over 12. Okay, so we know that um, this is true, and we have a minus b if a is pi over 3 and b is pi over 4. Okay, so let's look at the sine of a minus b. So sine of pi over 12 is the sine of a minus b. So we can say that the sine of pi over 12 is equal to the sine of pi over 3, right, the sine of a, times the cosine of b, pi over 4, minus the cosine of a, which is pi over 3, times the sine of b, which is pi over 4. Okay, so let's just work this out. Equal to, what is the sine of pi over 3? The sine of pi over 3, which is 60 degrees, is radical 3 over 2. Cosine of pi over 4, we know that to be radical 2 over 2, minus the cosine of pi over 3 is 1 half, and radical 2 over 2. So I work this out again, and I get radical 6 over 4 minus radical 2 over 4, and this becomes radical 6 minus radical 2 all over my common denominator. And this is my final answer, which is the sine of pi over 12. And I have used my, dif my difference identity to solve for pi over 12. Okay, now I'm going to let you solve the final um, example C, okay? Now let's look at the multiple response. Um, and how can I, which expressions would be equal to the cosine of 93? So I, I need to say which problems, how can I get to 93? Well, if A is 42 and B is 51, what would get me to 93. Well, I'd have to add a plus b. So what function would get me to the cosine of 93? Well, that would be the cosine of a plus b. Well, which of these two functions is going to be the cosine of a plus b? Well, I hope you picked number 1. Because remember, when you use the cosine of a plus b, a, the cosine of a plus b the sign is opposite in the middle, okay? It's the, the negative, okay? So, and then if I'm using um, the co, the, the, these numbers, 108 and 15, 108 minus 15 would give me 93. So I would have to use the cosine of a minus b. Well, how does that function work? The cosine of a minus b, it has a what? It has a plus sign in the middle. So my multiple response would be 3. Okay, let's turn the page over. Come back to that problem and solve it, please. Okay, I'm gonna, we're going to do a couple of these problems. I'm going to choose to do numbers 1 and 3 with you. You go ahead and do 2 and 4 um, on your own. Okay, numbers 1 and 3 we'll do together. Write each expression as a single trigonometric function. So what are we doing here? We're reversing what we just did. We're looking at the trigonometric identities and saying how can we uh, write them as a single expression. So now we're saying, all right, we see them, the right side of the expression, how can we go backwards to find whether they're the sine of a plus b, the cosine of 
a minus b, what are they? Well, first let's identify a and b. So I look at this function and I say a and b, a and b. Now I have to find out, is it sine or cosine? Well, if it's sine, cosine, cosine, sine, what are we looking at? We're looking at the sine, right? So, okay, and then if I have plus in the middle, what do I have? Well, with the sine function, when, the, when these, this signs match, it's plus. So I know that I have the sine of A plus B. You see how I drew those conclusions? Okay, I know I have the sine of A plus B when I'm looking at my identities, so now I just have to put it all together. So I know what A and B are, I know that I have sine because I have cosine sine, and I know that it's plus. So now I'm just gonna put it all together. Now I have the sine of x plus 2x. Can I do anything else with that? Yes, I can. Can I add x plus 2x? I can, because they are like terms. So now I have the sine of 3x. And that is as simple, simplified as I can go. Okay? All right, let's do number three. All right, so first I'm gonna identify a and b. This is A, and this is B, okay? Again, I have sine, cosine, cosine, sine, A and B. So this, this is A, and this is B. Now, so I'm looking to find whether I have sine of A plus B or sine of A minus B. And because it's the sine function and I have a negative in the middle, what do I know? I know it's not the sine of a plus b, but it is now the sine of a minus b. Because I look at my identities and I say, when it's the sine, it's the same sine, okay? So now, okay, I know what a is, I know what b is, so I'm gonna write it out. The sine, what is a? x minus pi of a minus, what is b? x. Okay, so recognize that. This is a minus b. Okay, now can I simplify it anymore? Well, I can because x and x are like terms. I have positive x and negative x. They actually just cancel each other out. So I am left with the sine of negative pi. Now we know from our parity, looking at your um, your red trigonometric identity sheet, we know from our parity um, functions that the sine of negative pi is the same as the negative sine of positive pi. And we also know what the sine of pi is. If I think about my unit circle and I think about pi, I am I'm over here at negative one, zero, right, my unit circle, cosine sine, what is the sine of pi? The sine of pi is zero, and negative zero is just zero. I can solve that function. This function is, in fact, zero, okay? All right, I want you to solve two and four. Give them a try on your own. Bring them back to class tomorrow, and we will go over them. All right, there you go with uh, sum and difference identities.